my teacup, sometimes I think I see Many people sipping round the world with me When the kettle whistles and it is time for tea All these new friends smile and share my tea with me So welcome back to another day in our month of tea brewing. We have uh, already covered tea bags, tea fobs, the little individual tea brewers that you can drop into the cup and pull out with a chain. Today it's a tea basket and the idea that what we're doing when we trap the leaves inside a container that keeps them from being in our cup when we drink it um, is expanded to these designs that are made with a mesh. This is a plastic mesh. This is a stainless steel mesh. And my favorite, this is my personal favorite, you can see how well worn this cup is. It even has, comes with my uh, chips and dings from almost constant wear. So there are a few things that I particularly like about this system. This is from T-Spot. It's a three-piece set with a lid that inverts and is sized so that the infuser, the ceramic infuser, fits snugly into it. So this is a doak tea. It's from a, a fairly new area in India, in the Bihar area of India, and I'm going to leave a link for your uh, enjoyment later on to read about it. But these are big, beautiful leaves. I'm trying to find one that I can... These are really two leaves and a bud, and I... Can you see how 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 long and wide this leaf would is when it unfurls. These are gorgeous, gorgeous leaves. So when we infuse in a cup like this, we don't miss out on that whole process from the time that the water meets the leaf for the first time till we're, you know, at, we're completely finished and we go back and we look at our totally restored leaves that look like they've just been picked. Uh, then with this cup, set with this set if I'm careful about the way I allow this to drip out give it a couple of good shakes I without spilling this all over my table I can let the leaves rest enjoy my my first brew come back and redo this again for my second or maybe third or maybe fourth infusion with the multiple infusions each cup is going to taste a little bit different. By the end of the, the process, the last cup will be the lightest cup and probably have the least caffeine. So that's a great tea for me to drink, say, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. After that, I don't really want any more caffeine. So a word about the way I've stored this tea um, is that I've left it in the original bag because as it's packaged and as it's shipped, the leaves, uh, as they curl together, uh, they, a lot of the air is forced out. I don't want to introduce any more into it. So I squish it up, but I put it into a glass container that keeps it airtight. The bag itself resists light damage. Uh, not unpacking it doesn't add any air. This also keeps any aromas from my tea cupboard from uh, from compromising the taste of this tea. Now, oh my goodness, I'm looking at the beautiful, beautiful long leaf and the tiny, and this tiny little bud. This is two leaves and one bud. So, so your homework, if you choose to accept it, is to visit the link that I have included, read more about Doak Tea, and start to grow that idea that we're not just a history of old classic teas that each year we've got new new growing areas and new teas emerging and so we'll be looking at a few more of those as we go along i'll see you tomorrow bye oh and the kettle whistles and it is time for tea i think of those who made it just for me farmers in the green fields very far away Pruned and picked and dried it in a special way. Looking in my teacup, sometimes I think I see Many people sipping round the world with me When the kettle whistles and it is time for tea All these new friends smile and share my tea with me.